welcome to Fishing with Gary. Today we're back at Bartlett Lake. It's the first time we filmed here since the lake was up. You can see that it's only down four or five feet. It's at uh, 95%. So today we want to talk about a new rig. We're just trying it out for the first day. Just kind of was playing with it. And uh, we're calling it the tail walking rig. We got the Texas rig, the Carolina rig, drop shot rig. So we're calling this the tail walking rig and I'll, I'll uh, explain to you and show you how the, I rig this. Um, we got out here, it's kind of late. It's gonna be 101 today. The fish is a little tough right now in the afternoon. We didn't get here in the morning, but it's uh, noon. So we thought we'd just come up here and shoot a show. So I threw this out a couple times and got bit. So I'm just kind of dragging this. Let me just kind of work this around, you know. Actually, my line's getting pretty heavy right now. <laughs> Excuse me, let me reel this one in. <laughs> Some, a lot of these are just small fish, like this one's just a little one. So we'll just get him in here and let him uh, go. Go on back in there and grow up. So what we got here is just a uh, regular trick worm, okay? Watermelon with black, watermelon red and uh, just got it on a little two-odd hook. And I'm gonna rig that Texas rig, that's all I'm doing. So I'm just rigging that straight like that. What I did was I stuck a nail in the tail. That's why we're calling it the tail walking rig. So there's our nail. I'm gonna take the nail, push it into the tail of the rig. Just like this. And when it goes in, it's gonna walk on the bottom like this. Instead of standing up with a weight on the front and walking like this, it's gonna walk backwards. So let's try it out. I caught one by accident there. They've been biting pretty good. Uh, one, one minute you might get a pound one, a pound and a half, sometimes a two. So let me get back up where the, I can reach the shoreline. Naturally, the wind just came up. All right, we're back at it now. We had to make some adjustments for the wind. There hadn't been no wind when we first got out here, but now it's starting to blow pretty good. But uh, as everybody knows that fishes, wind is your friend. It actually generates and stirs up the water and gets the fish biting. So we'll give this rig a try and see uh, how we're doing. We're just fishing, just fishing little points like this, just little rocky points that are on the, you know, and those are usually the good ones where you have some sand on each side and then all of a sudden you got some rock, you know, rock in between. So we'll just kind of make a few casts here. I'm just using a real light action Johnny Morris rod. It's real light. You know, it's got a little pro light rod and reel. This is a very inexpensive one, but it's light. I picked this because I could throw it on a bait caster, this little worm. So the idea is to let this go down hit the bottom, you know, in four, five, six feet of water. And then what I'm doing is I can feel that just kind of bounce on the bottom, just like a real Texas rig. The only thing is, it's bouncing on the tail. So when I put that in the swimming pool, it looks really neat because the tail's just hopping along the pool, kind of like a, kind of like a shaky head, but backwards. Oh, darn. Well, lost that one. All right, I gotta fix this up with another one. So we're gonna show you how we rigged this. I lost the last one, a fish took it. So I'm using just regular Zoom trick worms, watermelon red. So what we're gonna do first is we're going to rig the nail in the back of the, the back of the worm. So one thing I learned that if I cut the, just the tip of the worm off on the back and squared it up, I could stick that nail right down inside that inside the tail. So I'm just using a regular, you can use finishing nails, cut nails. You know, I bought these at the Bass Pro Shop. They're the nail weights that you normally put in there. Here's the little trick, garlic, dip and dye. You know me, if you watch my videos and shows, I always dip my brush hogs and my worms, always. So, we're going to rig this up, Texas rig. Simple, put it in the head. 
quarter inch, bring it up just like this. Now you gotta make sure that worm is straight. So I'm just gonna bend it just a little bit, make sure it's straight. Look at that, perfect. All right, let's go back and let's catch a fish. You know, we had a lot of rain this, this past winter, so all of our lakes filled up. Even uh, Bartlett filled 100%, Horseshoe filled 100%. The only one that didn't go 100% was Roosevelt, and that filled up to 71%. All the rest of the lakes filled up, so Pleasant's full. The only thing is with this rig, folks, is you got to be fishing kind of shallow. So if the fish are anywhere from 10 to 15 feet, you're good. A little deeper than that, because I'm only using that nail weight just to get me down. So, and most of the fish right now, today, these smaller ones are all in anywhere from five to 12 feet of water. So I'm just gonna let that sink to the bottom and just kind of walk that, walk that, tail, that tail on out from the shore. The good thing about this is, is it's Texas rigged. The, the hook is Texas rigged into the bait and the hook's riding on the top. The, the worm with the tail and the weight in the tail was riding on the bottom, just bouncing on the bottom. So your hook's not gonna get stuck. It's just that. This is just another one of those rigs that's a finesse rig, like a Nico rig or one of those rigs that when the fish are, are, aren't biting real good, that you can use to keep catching fish. So if you come out here early in the morning and the bite's good on a crankbait or top water or whatever, and all of a sudden that sun gets up and it's 100 degrees outside, you know, sometimes they'll just quit biting. So what I do then is you gotta think about, if you're gonna stay, you gotta think about, well, what am I gonna catch them on, you know? So I'm just gonna kinda keep working this rock. You can see that this rock is, you know, not real chunky rock, but it's big rock that's permanent on that shoreline. So I'm just gonna let that go down in shallow water. I'm gonna start in three feet of water, two, three feet of water. And I'm just gonna walk that bait, just kinda jiggle it down. Okay. So, you know, when I'm bait working this in, you know, my hook's up on the very top of the worm and it's Texas rigged and the nails stuck up in the tail. That's why I named it tail walking rig like Texas rig, Nico rig. So I'm coming over all those rocks right now. And the only thing bouncing on those rocks is the tail with the nail in there. So I can feel that coming over all those sharp rocks and stuff. If I would have a, a wormoid on there, a tungsten or something, I might be getting hung up every once in a while. And if I was using a jig with a half ounce of weight, I would be getting stuck a lot. So. I'm just gonna try some of these little points like this. You can see that we got one right here and then right up there, look at that nice one up there. When you got sand and you got a rocks that come out like that, it can be good. So we'll just give this a try. So I'm down in about 14 feet of water right now, 15 feet, that's about as deep as I go. And I'm just walking that. The only reason I came out here is because there's fish on the graph. So there's a bite. It doesn't take much to hook these fish, folks. This one feels just a little bit bigger, just a little. He's kind of bending the rod. So, oh, he's just a little bit bigger. Oh, that's a nice little Bartlett Lake bass. Whoa, that one's a little bit bigger. All right, look at that. Sometimes you catch them that big, sometimes we catch them a little bit smaller. So, whoops, that wasn't good. All right, I'm gonna rig that back up Texas style. And I'm gonna start all over. I'm gonna cast that way up. And I'm gonna walk that bait all the way out here to 12 feet. I'm gonna move up here where it's not so windy. Just letting that go on the bottom. All I'm doing is just pulling that, just hopping that right along the bottom on the tail of the worm. The one worm that I think is the best would be the trick worm, because it's seven inches, six, seven inches, and it's got a little meat to it, you know? So I'm using watermelon red. I like watermelon red and watermelon candy. 
Oh, oh, I missed it. Okay. Well, hook's all the way out, so, all right. You get a lot of bites on this, I'll tell you. <laughs> it's a good way to, it's a good finesse bait to trap, and I'm, I'm gonna eventually try other things too, other, other, other uh, creature baits and try some other stuff with it too, but the worm is, is probably the, gonna be the best, the best bait to use on this. All right, so one of the tricks is after you make your cast and you're just bumping that out, you know, since this is so light like this, you know, I'm just reeling it in real slow like this, and I'm just, every once in a while I shake it like that, so I'm bouncing that on there, and then I always stop, and I give that chance, that fish to, he's already looking at it, and give that fish a chance to, to maybe get it, so I bounce along, stop, tick, there he is, there he is, another one, it's coming up, ooh, this is a nice one, look at this one. These are nice, nice Bartlett Lake bass. I'm telling you, they, uh, you can see the worm up above the, on the line up there. I'm just gonna get down and get these. A lot of these fish are caught right on the, right on the top of the roof of the mouth. You can see that. But that's a nice fish. I mean, for Bartlett Lake. They got bigger fish in here, but when you can go and get a fish stuff, you know, that quality. So that's a good one. So we'll let him go. And we're going to slide my worm back down. Oops. Instead of getting a brand new worm, folks, all you gotta do is just bite off just a little bit of the old one and just start another hole in the worm, just like this. One thing I like to do is uh, I always watch my graph all the time. I mean, if I'm not glued to the shore, I'm not glued to the, you know, the end of there, but, you know, six feet of water, I'm seeing a fish. So I'm right under the boat. I'm gonna just bounce that right on top of that. And there's the bounce back. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, it's a 50% chance. Sometimes you can uh, catch those fish that are running this one isn't as big as the last one, but you know what, it's a nice keeper. Yep. If you don't want to jump, you don't want to jump. So that's just a real nice little pound and a half fish, you know. Beautiful colors. They had a really good spawn last year, so we'll throw him in there. And Rig up my worm Texas rig again. Run it all the way through. All right. I always make that cast up towards the bank first, and then I bring it out and I look at the fish on my graph. So you, they might be in two feet of water, or they might be in 10 feet of water or eight feet of water. So I'm just kind of playing the odds of where those fish are. But there's so many fish in this lake right now. And the trouble is I was using other baits brush hogs and jigs and stuff, and I couldn't catch any fish. I did, they just wouldn't bite it. But I put this on, I wanted to try this, and uh, they're seeming to like it pretty good. So just another little tip, I like to bring you guys some stuff, you know, that other people aren't using, and you can try some new stuff, and you can fish this with a spinning rod also, pretty easy. I'm just using a real light action. These little rods like this are only about I think you get the rod and reel for about $89. Oh, oh shoot, I just missed one. I gotta dead stick it sometimes. And then I, I'll, I'll hop it. So I'll dead stick it, and then I'll hop it a little bit. That could be a real small fish right there. But as soon as a big one comes on, I'll let you know. Uh-oh. Now there's shad. That's a group of shad right there, and there's always fish close to shad. Oh, hang on a minute. I got one. <laughs> Hold on. 
Ooh, a nice one too. Got him right under the shad. Anytime you see shad on this graph, I'm telling you, there's a good chance of, uh, of uh, catching a fish. Ooh, man. Whoa, that's hard on the rod. Right in the top of the mouth again, look at. Boy, they got some big old hook mouths, man, I'll tell you. Looks like they've been eating crawdads. Yeah. All right, let's let him go. He's swimming away. Let me see if, I'll just keep bouncing this out here as I drift out from the shoreline just to, oh, there's a bite. You don't have to set the hook hard with this. They, uh, whoop, we got one of those juniors. Well, I'll tell you what, this is a real cheap rig to, whoop, lost the, lost the worm in the rig. No, I didn't, there it is. This is a real cheap rig to do. One more, one more thing, uh, zoom, seven inch, watermelon red, nail in the tail. I put a chartreuse on the tail and that's all you have to do. It's so easy. And I got a little wide gap hook, a little number two. And I'm fishing with, uh, looks like eight or 10 pound less, uh, line less. So that's what it looks like. So take it out and have a good, tr good, a uh, lot of fun doing this. Do it for fun. I don't know if it'd be any good in tournaments, but it catches a lot of fish. So you guys out of Bartlett, uh, you're always coming up and talking to me and waving at me and stuff like that here. I don't know why I only come up here once a week. I, I want to thank you for watching Fishing with Gary, and we'll see you on the next show.